When Jesus called his disciples, his first word was, Come. He invited them because he loved them unconditionally. In the second column, he invited them into an intimate personal relationship with himself. In the third column, he said that he wanted to change them. In the fourth column, the automatic result would be that this transformed person would make new disciples. To give ourselves for this transformation process in column three, we have to go back to our family of origin. Each one of us belongs to three families. Our family of origin, our current family, husband, wife and children, and the family of God, our spiritual family. Our behavior is very often determined by our family of origin and not by the family of God, and we don't even recognize this. From our family of origin, we inherited many blessings, gifts, and opportunities, but because they were imperfect people, we also inherited patterns that do not resemble Jesus as well as emotional wounds. For some the load was minimal, for others a heavy one to carry. Some are so accustomed to walking with such excess weight that we cannot imagine living in another way. Our families are the most powerful group we will ever belong to. Therefore, what happens in one generation often repeats unless the Holy Spirit reveals it, and we allow God to heal us from that. My family imprint certain patterns of behaving and thinking on me. These patterns work like commandments. Some are spoken and explicit. Some are unspoken. They are carried over consciously as well as unconsciously. This determines which role I'm going to play, what kind of behavior is appropriate, and what my values will be. It is as if our behavior is programmed, like a script for a movie. Think about your birth order. Oldest children, middle children, and youngest children often act in expected ways. The role I had to play in my family, the quality of communication that prevailed, paradigms and thinking about every aspect of life all made me the person I am today. Some good, some negative. Don't be afraid of the future. Be afraid of repeating the past. Spiritual formation, to grow towards Jesus' character, requires that we go back to go forward. We must break away from negative patterns that clash with the values of God's family. We must unlearn wrong habits. Discipleship is the process of putting off sinful patterns from our family of origin and being transformed as members of Christ's family. Working the biblical truths into our daily lives, we are growing into mature men and women, transformed by the indwelling presence of Christ. All families, regardless of their education, social class, nationality, write scripts of blessing and wrong behavior for the next generation. It can happen that people repent and start following Jesus, learn how to pray, read the Bible, participate in small groups, worship, use spiritual gifts. This is the easier part. 
Rooting out deeply ingrained messages, habits, ways of behaving, especially under stress, are difficult and complex. People come to the Lord, but they are not discipled to live integrated lives, where the gospel changes their DNA, their characters. There are many biblical stories that shows how patterns of sin and brokenness were passed over from generation to generation. In the lives of Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, they were one Patterns of lying and jealousy. Abram lied about Sarah. Isaac and Rebekah's marriage were full of lies. Jacob means the deceiver. Jacob's children lied to him about Joseph. 2. Patterns of favoritism. Isaac favored Esau. Jacob favored Joseph and Benjamin. 3. Patterns of broken up families. Isaac and Ismail. Jacob fled from Esau. Joseph and his family. Whatever you are not changing, you are choosing again. It's not only our biological families of origin that write scripts for our behavior and values. We carry patterns from this specific time in history of our culture, country, or the world that we were born into. And sometimes these values clash with the values of God's family. When we become part of God's family, we receive a new father, a new name, new brothers and sisters, a new inheritance. It's possible to live in God's way. But this does not happen automatically. Although we are Christians now, we still carry the influences of the past with us. If you do not learn from the past, you are doomed to repeat it. What is not transformed is transmitted. If you don't heal what hurt you, you will bleed on people that did not cut you. That's why we have to reflect on the past. Go back to be able to go forward. We do not learn from experience. We learn when we reflect on our experience. Joseph is an excellent example of the result of reflecting on the past and stopping unkingdom-like patterns. From his great-grandfather, his grandfather and his father, he inherited patterns of lying, secrecy, and jealousy. He lost his parents, siblings, culture, language, freedom, all in one day. He became an Egyptian slave. He was falsely accused of rape and sent to prison. His life from teenager to the age of thirty was a tragedy. But in prison... He became a faithful seeker and lover of God. He walked with God, and after the interpretation of a dream, he became second in power. He continued to journey with God. He honored and blessed the family that betrayed him. He demonstrated unconditional love and forgiveness. Joseph had a profound sense of the bigness of God. Therefore he could rest in God's goodness and love even in bad circumstances. He admitted honestly the sadness and losses of his family. He did not minimize or rationalize the painful years. He truly forgave and blessed his brothers. He rewrote his life script according to scripture. He could have said, my life is a mistake. 
I am worthless. I should never trust anyone. Should not take risks. I should not allow myself to feel. It is too painful. Joseph was aware of his past, thought about it, reflected on it, and this opened the door for God to rewrite his future. Even the names of his children are a sign that he reflected on his past. Manasseh means to forget. Ephraim means fruitfulness. Joseph partnered with God to be a blessing. He joined God to bless his brothers. Joseph made the choice. Because he walked with God, he could make the right decision. Joseph's story is a testimony that, with the grace of God, we can stop the spiritually immature patterns of the past. We do this not only that our own life can glorify God and demonstrate the kingdom more, we also do it for the sake of our grandchildren and generations after them. And as we reflect on our past, there is so much hope. My past is not my destiny. When I am reborn through the Holy Spirit, I have the opportunity to be transformed in my DNA, the deepest levels of my character. We are not victims of our past. Joyce Meyer writes, It is not as difficult for me to face the truth about myself when God is dealing with me, because I know He can change me. However, in the beginning I had spent most of my life hiding from one thing or another. I had lived in darkness for such a long time that coming out into the light was not easy. There is no hiding from the truth, because truth is light. Truth is one of the most powerful weapons against the devil. Satan wants to keep things hidden in darkness, but the Holy Spirit wants to bring it into light and deal with them, so you can be truly and genuinely free. Like most people, I blamed everything on someone else or circumstances beyond my control. I thought I was acting badly because I was abused. But God told me, Abuse may, may be the reason you act this way, but don't let it be an excuse to stay this way. Joyce, you can be pitiful or powerful, but you cannot be both. Self-pity keeps us trapped in the past. If you have been disappointed in the past, as a Christian, you can be reappointed.